Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Blues Talk. Um, I've allowed a few days for the dust to settle on the whole Gary Monk situation. I did put up a video uh, last week where I was a little bit, a little bit angry. You know, it was all very fresh, and I'm still, still in a little bit of shock from it. But I'm thinking we've got to look forward now. And we've got to think, what are TTA's next actions? The Gary Monk sacking could be the first in a series of bad decisions from TTA. We're yet to find out. So we're going to talk about a few things. First of all, the statement uh, saying that Pep would be the new caretaker head coach. It's a bit of a weird statement. I'll look into that. Secondly, we're going to look at Che Adams and see whether he's going to stay or whether he's going to go. And then finally, we're going to finish off by talking about Trillion Trophy Asia, Blues and whether we're going to spend big again and go for a really big gamble, which could be a possibility. Before we get into that, though, I just want to say a big shout out to our sponsors at OneFootball. Um, they've had a lot, a lot of the articles on OneFootball at the minute. Are uh, Shay Adams based? We've got Vassell there and everything. It's by far my favourite football app. You all know it. I like it just because it's quick and easy to use. It's fast and it's just straight to the point with um, everything in one place, which is what I like about it. But Feel free to check it out. The link is down in the description. Let me know what you think of it as well. But without further ado, let's get into this video. One more thing that I did forget to mention is uh, Dong Ren did go and speak to the press about the Gary Monk sacking. His words were plain and simple, Gary Monk didn't care about his job, which are very strong words. For me, it felt like Dong was trying to get fans back on his side. Dong mentioned a lot about the use of the agent James Featherstone, who uh, was involved in transfers. Um, he was implying that, 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 that Gary Monk wanted him involved in every single transfer. He said because of this, Gary Monk didn't have the true interests of Birmingham City at heart and had some personal interest there. Gary Monk couldn't respond. I think there were some legalities in the contract. He couldn't. He can't basically respond to it. Um, so you've got to take that information and do what you can with it. So Don Ren said, We gave Gary everything he wanted. There was only one thing that triggered this. I made it clear that we did not want his agent, James Featherstone, of Omnisport Sports, involved in every single deal. Now, we don't know the players put forward that uh, perhaps Monk might have said, No, uh, you know, I want James involved in this. We don't know the players. Rumours are flying around, but I don't want to get involved in rumours. He then went on to say, I'm not 100% sure he was trying to get fired, but I know he didn't really care about his job. Which I think is fairly harsh words. Fairly harsh words from, from Dong there. I think he did care about the job. I do think he cared about Blues. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll really know the full extent of this. And it's hard to, to gather the truth from this. But as you say, there are two sides to every story. But I think Dong is just trying to get the fans back on side. Personally... I don't really buy it. So the Birmingham Mail say here, it is understood, however, that Featherstone has been assisting Blues in transfer negotiations way before Monk's arrival. He was used during the Gary Rowett and Zola periods, and there are also suggestions from those close to Monk that the single agent claim is not entirely true, but we can't get a statement from Monk for whatever reason. So it's hard. It'd be good if he could just defend himself from these allegations. Um, it's hard for me to say from a from my perspective, who's right or wrong. But for, for me, at least I can see why he was sacked and that maybe it wasn't purely on a results basis. However, I still think it was a very unjust sacking. Uh, but I just wanted to say that as well. Let me know your thoughts of it down in the comments as well. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about Pep Clotter and his management team. It was announced a few days ago on the 20th of June that Pep would be taking over as the, um, let's have, what did they say? Caretaker head coach. So it's not, he's not been announced as the head coach or the manager. It's still on a caretaker basis. Uh, which, which for me, it confused me at the start because I thought if you're going to announce someone, uh, especially when you see your not actively seeking an alternative permanent head coach or manager at this time, which is, again, very vague. But it's all a bit confusing to me. You know, there's a chance that they could be waiting for 
perhaps Gary Monk to get another job and you know he'd want to bring his backroom staff with him and that might have some sort of a monetary advantage if we hold on to them until that happens. Again if that's the case it's not ideal because we want to have our manager in place as soon as possible so that we can get transfers done so that we can start prepping for pre-season training starts tomorrow at time of recording so i think monday the 24th of june will be the first day back at training for blues and we need to know so i've looked for the definition on obviously the most accurate uh source wikipedia <laughs> but Wikipedia says, in association footballing terms, a caretaker manager is someone who takes a temporary charge of the management of a football club. So the key word there being temporary, caretaker manager, caretaker head coach, uh, another word, interim manager. You've got to think, like, that's sort of like Blue saying, yeah, um, he's our caretaker head coach, he's not going to be the manager forever or for the foreseeable future but we're not looking for a manager at this time. For me, I'm not happy with that really. I'm not comfortable with it. I, I, I'd like more clarity on it, to be honest. What are we waiting for? You know, if a manager comes in and there's a week to go until the season, it's, it's not gonna be able to implement what he's about for probably a month or so. According to the sack race, Gary Monk is favourite, five to one favourite, to be the next Newcastle United manager. So, are we waiting for that, perhaps, uh, before we go looking for a manager? If that's the case, we want Man Gary Monk to get a job as soon as possible. So yeah, it is a bit of a weird one. To be fair, like caretaker head coach, it doesn't look very long term to me. That that sort of that sort of a title. So. That's just what I'm worried about again. Are we actively looking for someone? Are we not? I don't know. I feel like maybe we're being kept in the dark about something. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, let's move on to Chai Adams now. And it looks like we are playing hardball. So Blues rejected 14 million for Chai Adams uh, from Southampton. And it seems like they might walk away from the offer. If we, if we continue to push back their offers, they're obviously going to walk away. Which is really good. It's like, when's the last time we've done that with a player? This would smash our, our transfer record in terms of receiving money for a player. And uh, we're looking to get as much as we can, which is good. The only thing I'm worried about is that the owners are just going to turn a blind eye to the finances again next season. Which are really we really can't afford. I mean, again, I've read, I've read things on um, Al Majir's website where he talks about the possibility of Blues... Having another summer like 2017 where potentially we spend money again. He talks about ways that Blues can invest money into the club. The way we can pump money into the club and maybe get around financial fair play. But it's a risk. Like, I feel like these owners are prepared to gamble. And sometimes gambles pay off. And you know, you might gamble some things. But there's one thing I don't want. And I don't want anyone to gamble with my club. I just don't want that. Like, I'm... I feel like these owners are, are very desperate for success. They're desperate for Premier League. And I think if people at the top are perhaps being promised things like Premier League, like top six, we're very, very we're forced to deliver on these. And I just don't I don't want I don't want the football club to be gambled with because it's very easy to get yourself into a mess. There are many clubs that have done it. Portsmouth still haven't recovered. Um, and it was only two summers ago when Harry Redknapp uh, had all that money to spend. And look where that got us. You know, nine points deducted last season. It's not good. The thing is, if you're going to gamble as well and going to put a lot of money into a team, you at least want to have the right foundations there, like a manager, like, a, like his backroom staff as well. Pumping a load of money in when you've just sacked the manager... Is not the best idea. Also, part of me thinks, who's going to be making the decisions on these transfers? Are we going to bring a director of football in? Often when you see the term head coach, a director of football is brought in to, to deal with transfers. So the head coach will look after the the day-to-day -day management, the, you know, the tactics, the gameplay. But the transfers... That all comes down to the owners, to, to the director of football who will suggest things. And ultimately, probably Dong Ren will probably be the decision maker in that. And if we, we cast our minds back to 2017, we signed a load of players, a load of promising players on high wages. 
some some high transfer fees, and it just didn't work out. We need to have the philosophy that Norwich had. It's not about getting it all tomorrow. It's about building the foundations there, signing, shrewd, making shrewd signings, looking at players that will grow in value, that will increase in value, so that your club can turn a profit. We don't want to be constantly overdrawn, constantly worrying. Like it's not, it's not right. Right now, we're only just recovering from 2017 summer, and I don't want us to do it again. And I know it's very easy to get excited with transfers and stuff, but I just have a little bit of a bad feeling that it might not go well. And some people like a gamble short term. Like, you know what I mean? Look at someone at a, a roulette table when they've got the money in front of them. And they're thinking about what could be. They're thinking about, I could win a grand here or whatever. And then once that money's gone, once that, you know, once the ball's spinning around the roulette wheel... And it doesn't land on the, it doesn't land on red, you know. It doesn't land on your number. It all soon sets in very quickly that it was a bad decision. Would it would it be smarter to take that money and rather than gamble it on the roulette table, invest it? That's what I'm thinking. Play the long game with it. I I don't mind. I don't mind. We've been through a long hard time. We looked like we looked like we were coming out the other end of it. And now we look like we want to throw ourselves into the into the fire pit again. And you have to remember that we we only just survived relegation. It could be very, very different if we decide to do this again. All I'm saying, Blues, is that if you do want to try this again, get the right management team in to do that. For me, it was Gary Monk. For me, you have to trust the manager with the money. Let them make the decisions with transfers. Don't interfere. Or when you bring in a director of football, bring in someone that knows the club, doesn't have too much of their own personal interests uh, invested in that. All I can say is it's going to be a very unpredictable season. It's going to be so hard to predict. But that's going to be it for me today. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts of the season. What are you expecting from the upcoming season? Um... <laughs> it's, it's going to be typical blues, whatever happens. Uh, and hey, at the end of the day, I'm looking forward to being back at St. Andrews. It's going to be one hell of a ride. <laughs> All right, that'll be it for me anyway. Slap a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Um, and yeah, I might provide an update later on. You know what? We'll probably sell Trey Adams tomorrow now. But uh, it's going to be interesting. It would be really good to see him stay. It would be so good to see him stay for a season. But... The long-term interests of the club have to be in mind. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. As always, keep right on, and I'll see you in the next one.